The girl from Mars Confectionery Limited. She worked on the production line, combining the nougat and the crispy bits on double deckers. Is that really true? Yeah, that's what that song is about. Yes, that's by Ash. Mm. And uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's very nice morning, Saturday morning, fans here in London Town. At least I hope it's nice where you are. It's sunny, which is nice. It makes a change. Do you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. And、uh, what's the forecast like for the weekend, Johnny Weatherpants? <clears throat> the forecast for this weekend is rain, snow, sleet,、uh, sun, sand, frogs, fish. All falling from the sky. Good one. Yeah. Hey, that's good. That's unusual weather then for this. It、weekend. is. It's fourteen weather. Did you? You know, a couple of weekends ago,、uh, it snowed where I was in、uh, Norfolk, and、uh, did it snow here in London Town? I didn't know, but I saw the Norfolk snow on the telly. I think. Yeah, yeah. It was quite thin. No. No. You dissing my snow? I. They had a report on the news, and there was a woman standing in a snowy street, and I noticed that the footprints around her had already melted through to the grass. Maybe she was standing in a hot street. That's not real snow. Proper snow. You know, you step in it, and and you get a proper crunch. Oh, it was crunching. Was it? We were sure. Oh wow, tobogganing weather. Certainly, tobog. You know, it was a little sticky for tobogganing. Sticky. It was unfortunate. You know how sometimes it gets a little sticky. Claggy. Yeah. It started to melt and then freeze again. Well, no. When it starts to melt, that's when it gets nice and slidey. Right, but anyway, it was it was a bit too fresh. I don't know what the consistency wasn't perfect. So the tobogganing was it wasn't good going for the tobogganing. But we had some amazing snowball fights、wow. and rolling the you know you could build really huge、uh, wow. snowballs with it because it was nice and sticky. It was good. Oh, I'm jealous. That sounds good. It never snows in London. No, or any of the major conurbations. It's too warm, though, isn't it? It is. How、it's, can we solve that?、Uh, by just chilling people out. Really, playing a lot of chill out music. A massive chill out. Having a huge like chill. Play a lot of zero seven, and then right, it'll really really snow. All right, I'll do that. That's、tonight. the plan. Yeah. So, folks, we've got a packed show for you. It's literally packed. There'll be very little dead air, and、uh, it's exciting. Am I talking it up well? Yes, good man. Keep going. Okay, we've got text the nation for you later on. It's a feature. People text us stuff. We read it out. Also, we've got song wars this week. We haven't done a song for a while, and we have a、um, national treasure song wars coming up later on. That's not the Nick Cage film, but songs about national treasures, which we decided that we would do last weekend. In fact. I think we decided on the podcast that that would be the subject.、Uh, so if you're a podcast listener, then、uh, it's nice that we're going to follow through with that. But listen, I'm going to stop rambling for the time being and play a track right now from one of the hot bands of 2009. I saw it on the BBC News website. They had a list of hot bands,、mm. which I might tell you about a bit later on. And this was one of them: Florence and the Machine. With dog days are over. Dog days are over. You see, that's Florence and the Machine, and they are tipped for the top in two thousand and nine. Really? Do you want to hear some other bands that are on that yes, list from this the BBC from... website?、Right. Uh, now I might throw in some made-up bands here, so you have to identify、okay. which ones、Good、are the one, real ones. Okay. Good one. I'm ready. Okay.、Um, Frank Music, all one word. It's uh, uh, he's a singer, a remixer, and a dancer, and an all-round whiz kid, Vincent Frank, and he creates high-energy robo pop. With, rubbish, rubbish. With fast neon beats, made up rubbish, and eighties tinged tunes. Nonsense. He's real, is he? Frank、yeah. Music. Frank Music. Frank Music. He's a white guy, and he looks、right. sort of weedy, and、um, he looks as if he might lisp.、Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, obviously.、Um, but he sounds exactly like a cross between Keen, current、mm. Keen, and Black Kids. I'm still reeling from the fact that he's white. Yeah, he's. <laughs> I mean,、uh, God. Frank music. What's, What's just, the world coming to? I'm describing him for yeah, you. Yeah, no, that's good.、Um, little boots. That's real. Okay. I've heard of little boots. Have you heard of little boots? Victoria Hesketh.、Mm. She、uh, she used to be in the synth rock girl group Dead Disco. Remember Dead Disco? Of course. Everyone <laughs> remembers、doesn't. Dead Disco to pursue a solo pop path, and she's been guided by Hot Chips Joe Goddard. Thank God. He guides her around、she、everywhere. She would have got terribly lost. Well, exactly, and or she might step in things. He's like a seeing eye dog. Exactly. Victoria Hesketh、uh, is prone to step in things, and you can hire Joe Goddard from Hot Chip、mm. to guide you around. Right. Also, he's good in department stores. He holds an umbrella up, doesn't he? He holds an umbrella and like a light stick as well、mm. if it's、mm. getting. Dark, and he says this way, 
Undies, this way, if you're looking for fairy lights, you'll need uh, to go over there to that department. He's ideal for that kind of thing. So little boots, um, that's exciting. Stat, two former, nar- uh, two former Nazis, no, what? two former nurses from right. Derby who play electronically tinged guitar pop that recalls the white stripes and... What are they called? De La Soul. Stat. Stat? Is yeah. that a medical term? Yeah. That's something so. they shout in ER. Yeah. Yeah, it's made up. It is made up. <laughs> Why are you? Because uh, you know I, I like ER. You. Yeah. <laughs> Stat. Stat. You wish Stat existed. I do wish they existed. You wish they operate on you. <laughs> the two nurses. I was thinking of their act. They'd right. sew up your wounds with guitar strings. That's a good And then I- strum your stitches. You see? I mean, the, the show is coming together, and they could play drenched in blood. Yeah, and they'd plug your winky into an amp <laughs> and see what noise it made. You want it? Or what noise you made. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that would be your average stat gig. <laughs> <laughs> a human instrument on stage would be good. You mm. know, like, take, take the whole idea of a Bez-type figure a bit further and plug in a person. And what was Howard Jones's dancer called? You always know this, and I can... I don't. Chain Man. I don't remember. Bob. Chain Boy. Phil. Um, and he, yeah, you you would plug him in. That's a good idea. Mm. <laughs> and get some like noises like out of him. Like a Muppet phone. Stat. It's rubbish. Come on. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> How about, um, Empire of the Sun, right? Mm. Australian duo Empire of the Sun. They mold 1980s influenced soft pop synthesizers and blissed out space beats. Real. It's about time someone called a band after that film. Right. I'd say that's real. That is real. Mm. That one of the guys used to be in the Sleepy Jackson, if you of remember course. them. Of course. And they look like MGMT. And that basically, what, as far me- as meaning what that they haven't got shirts on. No, they're all dressed up like raving ponces. Oh right. <laughs> and that's the thing for night uh, for two thousand and nine, as far as I can tell. Everybody's going like early eighties. Of course, we predicted this. Maybe it was in a pre-record. We predicted the next thing coming round was rave again. Right. Because that's what... Well, not so I much mean, rave, but but just sort of... Um, pos- I read a big thing in the paper about rave coming back. Is it? Yeah. Oof. So there. Is that a good thing? I was never a part of the rave scene. Did you go to any raves? Not really. Not re- It bypassed me. Mm. I was already too old by that stage. It's ludicrous. Listen, more music now. Uh, and uh, is, this <clears throat> is this a free play now? Joe's oh, free yeah, play. it's mine. This is uh, Cornelius. He's from Japan. Mm. Uh, this is called Drop. He's having his bath there as well. Yeah, that was recorded entirely in his lavvy. In the lav? Mm. In the bowl of the lav or in the bath? All around the place. Up the spout, down the vicar's (laughs) pantry. (laughs) Is that a saying? Yeah, it is now. Um, You know, that's not... That's dangerous, though, isn't it? If he's got... Especially Cornelius with all his electronics. Oh, he uses organic uh, electronics. Oh, does he? They've only got them in Japan at the moment, but uh, machines powered by Cress. (laughs) <laughs> by watercress <laughs> you wouldn't understand it man it's coming it'll be here in a couple of years cress power yeah all the mp3 players and stuff like that and phones in japan are now powered by cress that's very good yeah thanks cress would be a good name for a band wouldn't it probably um this is adam and joe here on bbc six music uh, after the news we are going to unveil our song wars songs and uh, that's going to be exciting. Of course, last week I played you my Biff Baff Boff demo. Mm. Now, lots of people have said that that is exactly the same as the sweet track Wig Wham Bam. Wig Wham Bam. And that uh, Mallet and Van Day were subconsciously channeling that sweet song. And were they to actually release that single, they would be needing to send all the money to the sweet. Right. Yeah. Several well, people texted and emailed. And actually told me that socially during the week. Okay. Who listened to the show. I don't, I'm not familiar with the song, but that's, that's the thing with, you know, um, genius pop, very basic pop. You never know when it's original or when you're just... Oh, it's very seldom remembering original. something. It's, you only have to put a slight spin on it, I mm. think. I mean, you can't... Uh, if there's only three chords involved, you can't sue someone for using those same three chords, even in the same sort of order, really. And even even if they have exactly the same lyrics and stuff. But you got some exciting feedback from your song, didn't you? Uh, I got some amazing feedback. Um, ITV2 <gasps> phoned up my agent and um, they said that, you know, they do a show called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here I Now. I know, I've seen it. It's presented by Mark the man Durdon from... Smith. Yeah, that's right. But who's the guy from Busted and his wife? Matt. That are in the, yeah, Matt from Busted. Matt, Matt Willis. Matt Willis. And his lovely wife or girlfriend, they're a kind of, they're the, the, the new Rich and Judy. Right. They're a couple yeah. and they live in the jungle. Yeah, and he's a very odd shape, isn't he? He's like Evil Tintin. 
If Tintin had gone bad, he'd yeah, look like Matt true. Willis. Well, he's got his crazy quiff now. He's got he? too many things going on. <laughs> he's got too many signifiers. He's got the crazy quiff, yep. the pirate facial hair, mm -hmm. tattoos left, right, and centre. He's had some tattoos. Bit of a pot belly. Which uh, doesn't look good with the new skinny jeans look, or maybe it does. I don't know. It does look. But he's just... got he's got very skinny jeans and quite a quite a little tum tum. It's funny that you mention that because I've been studying him very carefully. It's, it's impossible not to because he's got so many things to draw the eye in. He's like a shop window of a man, <laughs> and he's not. I mean, he's trim. He's in good shape. Yeah. But he's one of those people who appears porkalicious because he's gone for the new skinny look, right. and he's a man that enjoys his life. He's not a a fat man no no but he's a, a, a bon vivant so I mean, he's got a little bon bon le belly he even used to be a little bit more porksome really but, but now he's not in any Was way he the he's, drummer he's completely trim and busted oh i don't know maybe he hit behind the drums Was he the drummer what's there busted? a drummer in busted <laughs> i don't know did they use drums <laughs> were they real were they did they actually happen were they really one of the biggest bands in the UK for Anyway, so they phoned they phoned <clears> you up <throat> yeah they phoned up and they said uh would I like to come on the show and play my Biff Baff Boff song. Yes, you would. Right. So, of course, I said, there's no way that I'm doing right. it. I can't. No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't well, do it. a live performance of a garage band song would be a bit odd, wouldn't it? be a bit strange, yeah. be and a bit I've, like an uh, orbital gig. I've learned my lesson with things like that, really. So, uh, plus, I was too busy and I couldn't do it. So It wouldn't I said, be anything like an orbital gig, actually. I said, I regret that I won't be able to do that. And they said, well, could we just play the song? So I said, mm. yeah, you know, you're welcome to play the song. And there was a big uh scurry about like could you get it over to us as quickly as possible please so i emailed it over and uh, to the producer there and um but then a while later he sort of emailed me back and said thanks very much uh for the um for the track there uh you know I'm, i really th th there's a sh there's a strong possibility that we won't be able to play it just to let you know you know and it was all like he'd switched the power thing right back on me do you know what i mean no uh, <laughs> like for oh he'd made you feel important yeah. As if you had something they wanted. Exactly. And then, and then it made was you like, all excited in order to get it over quickly. And then it was like I'd sent the thing in myself. Like, please, please, could you play my Biff Baff Boff song <laughs> on your program with Mark Durden Smith? And they were turning Smith. down a little like, No, this, we'll try to play it, Addy, but there's, it's highly unlikely. But thanks very much for sending in your Biff Baff Boff song, and here's a lolly. How cruel of them. It was a little bit cruel, I bet I they thought. didn't even send a lolly. You know, I never got the lolly. Never got the lolly. It would have been fine if they'd just sent Lolly. Do you remember her? Yes. My Radio Rocks. If she'd come round and sang My Radio Rocks, I would have been absolutely fine with it, but there was no appearance of Lolly. Well, what a roller coaster ride. Imagine making it onto ITV2. I mean, I still ha will have to imagine it, because it would have been happen. the peak of our career. It would have been amazing. Uh, here's a trail for you, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Bong! Is that Daft Punk? Yeah? That is Daft Punk. They're from France. Did you know that? Yes, uh, that was the song called Aerodynamic. They're Taking like robot the... men. They wear hats and robots hats. They are robot men from the future. They have hats. Now, last week we were asking you listeners whether you'd had any dreams involving uh, Adam and I. We're supposed to do this earlier in the show, really, for our early morning listeners. But a couple of emails came in. Here's one from Julia Worley. Dear Joe. I had a dream about you last week. Unfortunately, it wasn't a sexy dream. We were standing by the self-service weighing machine in the fruit and vegetables section of Waitrose. Nothing much happened. I just marveled at your tall, tall, sturdy presence over me and felt reassured. <laughs> it was a bit like you were the giant from Twin Peaks. What? Wise and strange and enticing. I was, of course, also thrilled and aroused by the experience. Maybe one day it'll come to pass, and I wish it hadn't been such a trivial meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an amazing that's dream. That's my power. Yeah. What kind of dream? Is, there's no there. progression in the dream. You don't just... It doesn't have to be progression. It's really? an ambient dream. Ambient dream. Meandering dream. That's a little bit boring. Here's one from Fiona. I thought it was funny to hear that you get listeners writing in about saucy dreams involving you. I had such a dream years ago and have never forgotten it. Another one about you. Adam. Oh. chased me round a supermarket sweep style supermarket full of inflatable paddling pools on high shelves i was very frightened and when he caught me he started to spank me in one of the paddling pools <laughs> i didn't as you might expect wake up at that moment but carried on getting spanked for ages <laughs> <What>? <laughs> they're dreams they're not supposed to make any sense was that real did you do that uh, that's based on real events. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> What's different, then? <laughs> Maybe they'll tell us during the news. How long the spanking went on is different. Yes, it is 9.30 and time for the news. It's time for Song Wars. The war of the songs. 
A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Yes, Song Wars is back, listeners, after an absence of a few weeks. Two or three weeks. Two or three weeks. Uh, And this week... We've written songs about national treasures. Now, we were talking about this uh, again a few weeks ago. We, uh, by, by saying national treasures, we mean people who are essential to the fabric of the nation. Yes, Terry Wogan. In the broadcast media kind of thing. Um, the naturalist David Attenborough. Mm. Uh, Dickie Attenborough, even. People who the country would be worse off without. That's right. Jonathan Ross, I would put in there controversially right. at the moment. Uh and Stephen Fry, yes, would be mine. Now, is, is is Fry your choice for your song? Fry is my choice for my song. Yep, I've written a song about Stephen Fry. Right. And who have you gone for? I've gone for Lumley, as promised. Uh, because this is because mainly you saw a show where she went to the North Pole and looked at the Northern Lights. Yeah. And you were seduced by her. Uh, yeah, I think she's wonderful. She's lovely. Lovely, I mean, Lumley. We, our generation always fancied Lumley, of course, when we were growing up. The new Avengers, uh, as Purdy, she was mm. incredibly alluring. Uh, these, these are just the lyrics to my song. Are they? Okay. We should remind listeners t- uh, the, about what Song Wars is. Right. If they're new listeners, me and Adam have composed these songs and recorded them and played them using computer software during the week, right? Although I, I uh, constructed this one largely from real musical instruments really i played all the bits on this one that's exciting yeah but we've done them since last saturday yeah so we haven't had much time no so don't expect anything like special or proper how wonky is your one this time around uh it's fairly wonky it's wonky in new ways though (laughs) so we're gonna flip a coin and and the point of this listeners is that you listen to both tracks and then you vote for the one that you like best and and the one that wins gets the privilege of being played again yes next week (laughs) the other one just disappears into the ether that's right where it is where it belongs i've tossed a coin heads or tail uh so. heads heads to go first for me it's heads you're heads going to first go for, right okay so this is my song about stephen fry there's a little bit you need to know about it uh it is done in the style of gary newman early mm-hmm. gary newman mm-hmm. and i have uh, tried as closely as possible to replicate uh, an early gary newman track and sung in the style of the newmanoid And the lyrics are more or less a hagiography about Stephen Fry. Mm -hmm. You know, they are completely pro, I would say. And I've tried to include every aspect of his uh, life. Do you know what I mean? Every aspect? Yeah. Yeah. And that's made me feel a little queasy. Some parts of it might be a little queasy for listeners. All right. So uh, here's my song about Stephen Fry. This is a song about Stephen Fry. Including well-known facts about his life In the style of early Gary Newman If you were making a documentary About Stephen Fry You could use this song In it to illustrate different bits He was a tear away when he was young He was expelled from school and even went to jail He stole a credit card from a family friend But he cleaned up his act and got a scholarship To go to Cambridge University Where he met Hugh Laurie from House He's got a fruity way of talking He uses lots of long words He's nice Stephen! Just coming sketches with you, Laurie from House. Both of them were clever and unfashionably posh. Made them perfect for playing Jeeves and Worcester. It was clear that they were all so good at acting, which of course they both gone on to do. He was marvellous as his hero, Oscar Wilde. Stephen struggles publicly with his mental health. He goes from highs to unbearable lows. He's on the programme about him that was good. Fellow sufferers, it was comforting to see They probably won't use this bit in the documentary He's highly intelligent and sensitive And if I was gay I would Make you eye into a massive success. Oh, Alan, this 
themselves and cracked it all so. His recent series on America was very good. He's a national treasure and a national treasure too. With Nick Cage. It would be wrong to suggest he was perfect. Some jobs that he's been in have been a little bit rough. Like Peter Scrimson too and Spice World. But that's the worst you can say about the man. Then there's gonna be traps. There you go. That's my Stephen wow. Fry song. That's very good. The Newman impression is extraordinary. There. How do you? How are you doing that? It's like sort of taking a, a, a mistimed breath. Well, you start with Bowie, of course, which is what Newman I right, did. Right. Yes. You start with Bowie, and Ooh. then and then you have you have to go like that, like your voice is breaking Ooh. every now and again yeah. at the beginning of each line. Um, no, at the end of each line, oh. when you get to, um, I'd like to see you for tea. Oh, that was kind of good. That was good. That was very effective. Thanks very much. And what an amazing journey through Fry's life there. Yeah. <laughs> I skipped, you know, I, there's so much that he's done. I know. I mean, he's a massive polymath. Look at the size of that polymath. And I didn't get to include Blackadder and, and Harry Potter and all those other And what are you things. hoping to get out of that? Because one of the deliberate purposes of this yeah. Song Wars was to try and inveigle ourselves right. somehow into the universe of these people. To the favours of the, of the great. Well, it's a two-pronged attack. Yeah. You know, I, I could go for a response from Fry. Himself. That would, that would be amazing. Right. Right. Or Newmanoid. Or the Newman. If Newman liked the Newman impression, right? What about be... getting played on QI? That's not going to happen, is it? You think that's just out, that's shooting too high? Yeah, one of the good too things ambitious. about QI is that the, 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 it's sort of cultural barriers are, are, are very high. Like, they wouldn't let jerks like us on the program right. for a start. You know what I mean? True. Um, so why would they start playing stuff like that? Plus, I don't think Stephen Fry would actually like that kind of thing. He's the kind of person that only really Too modest. To, might embarrass yes, him. It would embarrass him. He, 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 uh, adverse criticism sticks in his head and, and kind things that people say about him or obsequious things, he, he pushes them aside. Well, let's see what, uh, happens. We've released that song into the, into the castle environs. Yeah. Maybe it'll scuttle into Fry's chambers. Uh huh. That would be amazing. So tell us about Lumley. Well, my song is uh, a tribute to Joanna Lumley and specifically this documentary she did where she fulfilled her childhood ambition of going to see the Northern Lights and it was uh, profoundly moving and she saw these lights which are very evasive. You know, you can't tell whether they're going to appear or where they're going to appear or whether there'll be cloud cover and the crew got some of the most amazing footage of the Northern Lights ever. The Johnny got. Borealis. Yeah. So uh, I've tried to capture that really. Uh, so this is my song, it's called La 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 Lumley. <laughs> For 55 years of my life, I've dreamt about seeing the Northern Lights. She was born in Kashmir in 1946. Her father was a major in the Gurkha Rifles. When she was a little girl, she had a picture book. With a drawing of the Northern Lights, she wished she'd one day see that sight. She applied for RADA, but she did not get in. They said she'd never be a model too ugly and that thin But she ignored the scorn they poured, confounded her detractors Five years later she was Britain's most in demand model and actress La 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 la, la 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 This is the journey I've always dreamt of making As Purdy in the new Avengers she'd kill you with her heel An alien with psychic powers in sapphire and steel but in her mind she could still find her unspoken ambition To see the Northern Lights before she died was still her mission La 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 la, la 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 This is a lifelong ambition La 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 la, la 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 My only dread is that we won't get to see them Through absolutely fabulous two marriages a son and even though it feels as though her life has just begun She journeys over arctic drifts and through the cold and wild And sees the light she's dreamed of seeing since she was a child Something's happening there! Look at that! This is terribly, terribly moving! Look at that! La 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 Thank you! Go the go go Go, 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 Joanna Lumley. I think I can die happy now. La, 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 <laughs> I've got to say that was, uh, sort of supposed to be a Kings of Convenience style. That's beautiful. Sort of a folk track. Lovely melody there. 
drifted into the arena of uh, the Pet Shop Boys slightly. No. Maybe Queens of Convenience, I don't know. It was nice. Something about the posh enunciation that was, was that, required. Was that you saying, thank you? No, that's Joanna. Oh, that's, that's, that's all Joanna. real. She, she looks at the, uh, at the Northern Lights and they're amazing. Yeah. And she's so moved by them. She just looks up at them and goes, thank you. Wow. And starts crying and blubbing. I, you know, if you don't cry at that doco. Yeah. You ain't got no heart. Where can you find that doco? If On the BBC iPlayer. It was certainly there last week. I don't know how long it'll stay up for. Right. Readily available. So that's the second song, La 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 Lumley. What's your song called, Adam? Stephen Fry. Just called Stephen Fry. Yeah. So get your votes in uh, by email, adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Uh, you're not encouraged to text your vote. No. We top them up via email uh, during the week, and the winner will be announced this time next week. Exactly. So if you were, like, listening to this show again and you texted us, the text wouldn't be... Oh, a waste of money. It would be a total waste Scandalous of money. Scandalous waste of money. You know, and uh, the castle would crumble. No one wants that. Hey, and you can listen to the songs again on our website after the show. They'll be stuck up and we'll play them again towards the end of the show, just uh, approaching noon. Seems unbelievable, doesn't it? But we're going to do that. Uh, but first, here's some real music. This is Laura Veers with Don't Lose Yourself. That's Laura Veers. Very nice. Don't Lose Yourself. Have you ever seen Laura Veers? No. She looks uh, a little bit specky and superior. Right. I like the sound of her. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, when I was at art school, girls that looked like her were always the conceptualists. And they would um, mock me sometimes because my work was too obvious. Quite right, too. It is too obvious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still is. Thank you very Plus much. Plus ça change. Ah, oui. Um, hey, listen. Yeah. Can I say something? Please do. There was uh, confusion earlier in the week because our podcast didn't go up. Oh, yeah. Uh, it usually goes up on... Well, it used to go up on Saturday evening, didn't it? After the show. But because of various disturbances in the castle that you might have read about, mm. every podcast is having to be listened to by a robot. swear sergeant a swear robot a filthy robot a dirty robot a dirty robot <laughs> to check that all the filth and dirt is is cleansed from it no you can't say that that is disgusting that's the dirty robot there <laughs> kind of thing he says no that's not acceptable that is offensive wow it's brilliant <laughs> it's like a robot <laughs> um so where was this going uh yeah no so it's not going to go up till wednesday no hello monday evenings now right right or Monday afternoons. But weirdly, a weird thing happened. You know, I'm quite obsessed with the iTunes podcast charts. Sure. I like to read the reviews and things and check it, our podcast position. And it's usually around the sort of 10, 11, 12, isn't it? Yeah. But on Monday, when there was no podcast, it shot up the charts. Yeah. It went to number four. Ooh. Even though there was nothing there to download. That's the highest it's ever been. Wow. It's very weird. Someone else noticed this. In fact, Ash... Is she our, our, our special fan, Ash? Yeah. Probably. She's the keeper of the flame. Yeah, she says, Joe often comments on keeping an eye on the iTunes rank, which I also noticed to be around 11 to 13 each week. What I found interesting was that during one week there was no podcast available. Your popularity has shot up to number six in the top 25. Mm. Uh, this could explain how Stephen Fry is always near the top when he very rarely releases a podcast. Stephen Fry and Ricky, you mean? Or right. maybe just Stephen Fry? Well, she's just saying just Stephen I Fry. I never understand how Ricky Gervais stays up there at the top when he's got no new product a lot of the time. I think it's to do with downloading his back catalogue. Right. But those hits still count. It's just the number of hits, maybe. Just the number of inquiries. Maybe, maybe that's why we got up there. Maybe, because people were panicked and trying to click it multiple Panicking. times. Panic clicking. Let's not do a podcast. <laughs> that's the answer ever. to everyone's problems. We'll be at the top of the charts. Be a better podcast as well, probably. Mm. Here's a free play for you listeners. Now, Joe, you're a Scritty Politty fan, right? Yeah, uh, am I? I, sort of. Well, you know, I, I just imagine Not you... really. Because you like soft boy music. I don't dislike them. And but I don't just like any kind of wimpy mid-80s warbling. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> just like you don't like every ill-tempered, short, hairy man with a guitar and a problem. Oh, I do. Hey. I do. Oh, mudslinging. You do. Okay. I do, though. I really do. Um, no, I like green gart side in small doses right he's the lead singer of scritty politty and well he's sort of the man isn't he scritty politty is green yeah. gart side although when they started out they were a very different proposition they were like sort of agit prop very angular have you ever heard skank block bologna by scritty politty no that's an amazingly weird um song we should play it one day on this show but this is from the other end of his career from his album white bread black beer which came out a couple of years ago and it's very much soft boy music and he's got the um 
he's got his crazy harmonies you know he's got like a very specific way of doing harmony amazing vocal acrobatics yeah. always go on so he does he has a couple of little bits of harmony action going uh bookending this this very weedy track which is nice like weedy in a good way i think he was one of the great 80s weeds wouldn't you say <laughs> you could have a whole gang of 80s weeds like you'd have the man from the associates as well sure yeah billy mckenzie yeah what other great weeds were there you'd have marilyn and boy george obviously uh edwin collins as well he was very was he fair. weedy yeah yeah but no but he was rough for postcard records like that was uh now that was more punky not really he was a big weed do you think yeah he was a giant weed the music wasn't that weedy no it was great but uh i'm not like i think he's not effeminate this is enough. not weedy in a pejorative sense this is a wee in a like this when i'm talking about it <laughs> cornish <laughs> is gonna duff you up well uh watch out green because he's coming to get you this is called snow in sun by scritty politi this is the voice of the big british castle it is the top of the hour oh that's wonderful i got so bored with the last hour i'm glad it's gone now here's the new one it's exciting and it's new how do you do as they did, yeah, oh, they did crash a the end there, mate. Cover of um, Ace of Spades, but they did it all right. Sort of like uh, country, country and western. And western <laughs> um, it's very funny, mm. and they're called Hazy Dixie, which is like, <laughs> and if you say it mm. fast, it sounds like ACDC. Oh, do you see? Do you see? So it's double mm. jokes. It's yeah. in fact, it's triple jokes when mm. you get to the anyway, way listen, they play uh, the song. I've got to go now. Yeah. So, also, um, um, I'll. St- well, I might run into you, but if I don't... Have, have a wicked have Christmas, a great life. yeah. Oh, God, a great yeah. life. Never yeah. going to see you again. Yeah, well, you never know, but it's been great talking to you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh, do you really have to go? Yeah, bye. I've got some jelly. No. Oh. What flavour? Oh, anyway. gosh. Listen. Strawberry. Delicious. Delicious. Would you yeah. like it? Yes. You were going to move on there, and I, I was. tempted you back with the jelly. Uh, Stephen News time now, listeners. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, if you don't know what the deal with this Stephen business is... You know what is, I'm going to do? I, I've clipped out the original Stephen... Oh, well done. ...stuff, right? And we're going to put it up on the website this weekend. So although I can't say to people that they can go to the website right now... They can, because the... Uh, I think the original clip is there on YouTube. Right, right. Yeah. So you can check out the the clip on YouTube, but yeah. if you're doing... listen, If you're listening to this show again during the week, you can go to the Six Music website and you'll be able to find the original Stephen clip, yeah. which will explain what we're I talking it's about. it's there already. No, it isn't. On the website. It is, it is, yeah, it is. But maybe not as beautifully edited as, as you have edited. How is it on there? Is it like the whole Because someone else, a listener, put it up on YouTube and I gave Claire the link oh. and she put it up last week. Yeah, but that's YouTube. Yeah, anyway. but it's on the site. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I wish you told me about this before I started sorry, speaking sorry. and looked like a complete idiot. Sorry. Thanks. Is that it? <laughs> yes. Have I just nullified? I've negated your whole. I was spiel. doing it this morning. I was clipping it out. Sorry, and everything. Man. You should visit our site. You should go and check I it out more often. Visit the site. I never want to visit the but site. But the idea is, uh, you're supposed to shout, Stephen, and then if if another listener to the show hears you shouting, right. Stephen, you reply, just coming or coming. Yeah. Uh, now, it happened to me in, in a shop, the same shop as it happened to you. Cinema store. We shouldn't mention it too much, otherwise it's advertising for them. Right. But I was browsing through tittles in there. Other all the latest tittles. Are available. Yep. And a young, shaggy-haired young man with a couple of friends came in, and as he left the shop with his, with his back to me, going up the stairs, yeah. he said, Stephen! And I was confused. I didn't know what to do. I thought his friend might be called Stephen. Yeah. I looked around. No one was looking at me expectantly or anything. So I didn't say anything. You didn't give him that just I coming. D- I said nothing. Denied. I just carried on <sighs> browsing. But then he disappeared up the stairs and I, it was too late to say it. And I felt ashamed and my girlfriend looked embarrassed by me that this I'd is, let our supporters down. This is after you read out that email from the guy at I my know. show the other day. Who I was just so- felt lost and hopeless and that I'd let the guy down, let the side down. But it is a bit of an albatross now, isn't it? I mean, it's the first time it's happened to me. But, it's hardly uh, an albatross. It's a tiny albatross. <laughs> a very, very small albatross. <laughs> an albatross fetus. It's a little mine. That's revolting. Hanging round. There's nothing revolting about that. It's nature. About an albatross fetus hanging around your neck. It's nature. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what God. That's why God created albatross f- f- fetus necklaces. <laughs> you can get them in Camden. Mm. 
<laughs> anyway, no, that's not. the end of my story. I just felt bereft. And if, if that young man is listening at the moment, he had sort of uh, a brown bowl yeah. of hair that it was quite long, and he was trying to buy the Dark Knight. Okay. And he'd spotted a copy, but he picked it up and he saw that it was Region 1 and he couldn't play it on his machine, and he went, uh, and put it back on the shelf. He's not missing anything. Missing a miserable night. Missing the film of the century. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've got a couple of Stephen clips for you from a film I was watching this week, and you have to guess what it is. Uh, here's the first one right now. Stephen. Yes. Are you still there, Stephen? Oh, look, I'm I'm sorry, Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're still there. It sounds <laughs> exciting. What's that film about? Uh, can you guess who that I is? I have no idea, but we should let the listeners guess, right? This isn't a competition. No. It's just a fun game. Just a fun it's game. Just a bit of fun. Have fun. Because everyone it. knows that competitions are evil! So we don't do them here at the Big British Castle, and nor should you, if you're thinking of doing a competition at home. Stop it! Here's another little clip there from this Is this film. from a different film? No, this is from the, the same, same film. film. Well, <laughs> Stephen! This is marvellous. <laughs> Sounds like a very good film. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want to hear the first... No, the first clip I'll just play you again quickly so listeners have, have a good listen. Stephen? Yes. Are you still there? Stephen? Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, Ingrid. <laughs> That's a very loud phone. You might you be... can hear everything the person on the other end says. Yeah, he's got his old school ringer on there. Um, you might be able to get it from that from that the voice of the actor there at the end. I possibly. Cannot. Can you not get it? No. Okay, listeners, uh, get thinking. Let us know if you know uh, which film that is. Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk is the email address or you can text us on six four six four oh four six interestingly we've had a couple of emails in from people who've experienced the same stephen shout mm. people are trying this experiment during uh, gigs even though we're encouraging them to do it between songs right not during songs this is an email from miharu uh, who says, I went to see Ben Folds on Sunday, and being the slightly obsessed fan that I am, my heart was beating slightly faster at the prospect of continuing the Stephen shouting at gigs. However, as I was standing waiting for the main act to come on, being on the slightly cowardly side of average, I started to think about chickening out. Imagine my utter joy when, just before Folds arrived on stage, I heard a strong, affirmative, Stephen, from the back of the audience. I immediately flung my head back and shouted back, Just coming! Maybe not like that. <laughs> this was responded to by a series of whoops and general giggles all round. What lovely camaraderie. Hey, hey, Ben Folds, that's good. And then somebody else at the same gig, He's Chris. Good. I heard a great Stephen with a few responses from the crowd at the Ben Folds gig on Sunday night. I hope Ben Folds would be become confused and spontaneously start playing his song Stephen's Last Night in Town. Mm. But unfortunately, he wasn't on the stage yet. So that's, I think, our most successful Stephen so far. That's a good result, especially uh, from a, a, a weed like Ben Folds. He would be in the weed gang, wouldn't he? I don't know. My weeds need to have long hair and be wearing dresses. Right, OK. Fair enough. Here's a bit of music for you now. This is Khalees. Is this new Khalees or old Khalees? Nah, this is Millionaire, isn't it? Classic it? Khalees. Yeah, this is classic with on on Andre 3000. Here we go. I've never heard that before. You're kidding. We've played it on this show loads of times. Maybe I went out for a whizzle. It's fantastic. It's got a, lo a lovely video. Very good, though. Khalees with Millionaire. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, we've had some guesses in uh, for the non-competitive competition. Oh, uh, it's not a competition. It's not, not a, game, a competition. It's a fun game. That we're playing with the clips, the Stephen clips. Shall we hear them again? Just hear the first one again. Stephen? Yes. Are you still there? Stephen? Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, Ingrid. And just to remind listeners that, uh, you know, because of the whole Stephen thing, which you can find out more about on the website, we're just collecting the odd mentions of Stevens in movies, you know. If you find any, then do make an MP3 clip of them and send them along. But that was one that I came across this week, and a few people think they know what it is. Uh, Julia says, is it Steve McQueen in the Thomas Crown Affair? No. Uh, that's insane. I don't know how you would have got that. Also, like, why would... Is he called... Is the character in the Thomas Crown Affair called Stephen? Don't remember. I don't know. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, it sounds like Paul Bettany in Wafty Rom-Com 3, says Mike. Um, that's not an actual Paul Bettany film, although I'd like to see it. Wafty Rom-Com 3. Uh, it would do very well, I think, this Christmas. It would beat Four Christmases, I think. Don't you reckon? I reckon. Wafty Rom-Com 3. Um, Who is it, though? It is, Neil and Crouch End has got this one, and also A Man in Swindon. 
he calls himself. He is correct in saying that it is Jeremy Irons in Damage. In Louis Mal's Damage. In Louis Mal's... Was that Louis Mal's last film? Louis Mal's last, last film is what I mean. Louis Mal's last film. I think it may have been. Was it? Mm. They always go out with a weird psychosexual film like mm. The Greats, don't it's they? It's got lots of very torrid lovemaking in it, Damage. Yeah, torrid stroke ludicrous. Lots of desk polishing. <laughs> and legs in weird <laughs> positions. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who, of course, the other one who went out with a, a crazy psychosexual film was, um, your man, uh, Kubrick. Stan the man. Yeah. Yeah, eyes wide shut. They get to a certain age, they run out of ideas, they think, yeah, I'll, I'll scrape the sexy barrel. Why not? Have a little sexy fun. Those were some good Stevens, though. Very good Stevens. Um, maybe we'll have some more of those next week. Thank you very much for texting and emailing all of you. Uh, congratulations. Neil and Crouch End, you have won absolutely nothing rightly so rightly so it's not about the it's not about the winning it's about the taking part now you've got a free play for us joe yeah this is uh, some hippity hoppity this is someone called baha M i don't know how to say the name where'd you find baha him baha madia baha media it's a she i think uh -huh. she was produced um it, it's a, an album i've got on my itunes that i'd sort of never bothered to listen to properly okay do you have anything like that on mm. your on yeah your mp3 player? where did you get it did you get it off i of can't or even remember where i got it right I cannot remember, but I suddenly discovered it when I was flicking through. And guess what? It turns out to be wicked. It wasn't suggested by the genius bar. No, I haven't. I haven't uh, updated genius. my iTunes. I refuse to up my iTunes. I refuse to update it. Yeah, especially quite right. not with the genius button. That's just like Last FM, isn't it? It just tells you genius similar sounding button. music, right? Yeah. If you like these, you might enjoy this. You hate <laughs> it. Yeah, I this hate that, that genius scorn. button. Do you hate it more than Scrappy Doo? I hate Scrappy Doo, and I hate the genius button. Anyway, this. This is uh, from an album called Collage that was released in 1996, and she was produced by Guru and Premier from Gangstar. Ooh. That's exciting, isn't you it? I love Gangstar. This is called Wordplay. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Text the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to talk about a thing and then ask you to send in uh, your thoughts thereon. Yeah. It's nearly Christmas. Folks. Is it? Yeah, it's very nearly Christmas. What is it? Three weeks now? Something like that. Uh, less than three weeks, maybe two and a half weeks. Mm. Next weekend, no, it's the weekend after that is our Christmas show, right? Which has been pre-recorded. 20th, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's a good one to look forward to. But I want to introduce a Christmassy theme into Text the Nation this week, right? And talk about uh, Christmas presents, specifically the most rubbish Christmas presents mm. that you've ever got for one reason or another. And maybe homemade Christmas presents as well. Because the older I get, the more I find it's impossible to buy good presents for people. Do you know what I mean? And around this time of year, like a few weeks before Christmas, this is when you should really start getting your present buying in order right Ob plus no one's got any money this year right credit crunch christmas credit crisis is not just a crunch i saw the crunch is over isn't it the, the crunch is the yeah. crunch is m a mere dalliance yeah now it's the crisis Oof. people are being fired left right and center woolies is collapsing that's the christmas present nexus that's is it really collapsing yeah oh my so God. uh so people have got to think of inventive ways homemade things to give people right it's always been the sort of hallmark of cruddiness hasn't it especially in the 80s and 90s when we were hog happy mm -hmm. uh everyone thought you know you don't give someone a homemade present that's rubbish yeah uh but now it's become the done thing it's a good way to go because you can avoid all sorts of hassle right i mean as we were coming into work this morning they were setting up all kinds of things with bits of scaffolding in oxford street i don't know if there's going to be some kind of stall maybe they're going to close the roads there and stop the traffic or i don't know or if maybe they would i was imagining that they were pr probably just setting up places where the medics would be you know what i mean like to save all the people fainting because the there's going to be such a crush yeah this has got to be the one of the busiest weekends of the year surely for for shopping in london so what are we going to ask people to text in well crappest present that you ever got stroke homemade present or maybe that you gave to someone as well so it's it's crap presents the absolutely most crappest it's all right if, if you're a kid it's all right isn't it oh it's all right anytime I think. do you think if you're a child then you can give your parents some kind of clay thing that you've made yeah that's charming or something like that i once gave my dad a hedgehog uh paper clip last year was that no, it was uh, it was a few years ago. <laughs> it was very nice, though. He's still got it. Yeah. 
I learned how to make it on Blue Peter. Did you? Yeah. Do they do makes still on Blue Peter? No, not about anymore. This? No, no, you're they, joking. They, they got rid of the they makes. Struck you how to cook up crack. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only make they do on that show now. <laughs> That's just a bit of humour. That's there. not true. Exactly. That's not true. Um, my dad used his technique was to write IOUs really <laughs> yeah he would give you an iou well no he would write it out and he would put it in a nice envelope so it looked exciting <laughs> how and would it, that would be for a quantity of money no no it would be for things like i remember one year my sister got driving lessons and so my dad wrote a little letter he said i'm going to get you driving lessons ah, this year that's all right. in a, uh, did you not ever get one uh yeah i think i did um i can't remember i can't even remember what mine was for and i'm not sure i got it sometimes he just gives us stationery uh, like a reams of paper and he'll find like a fruit box or whatever and he'll put the like he'll make a sort of mad gift package like a gift hamper so he'll find an old fruit carton uh from the street or something <laughs> and he'll put like some reams of paper in it a couple of oranges some batteries wow wrap the whole thing up with newspaper <laughs> and there's your christmas present that's quite good, you isn't it? You must have had some tantrums. No, we were always quite cool about it. Because, when, you know, when we were younger, we didn't realise who the presents were coming from. And my mum always used to sort us out. And it was great. You know, she was on top of the whole thing. But when it was older and it was clear who was giving what, that's when the gaps in my dad's present-giving skills started to show. <laughs> so that's when we got the batteries. You know, and they're good presents. And he'd always go, useful, it's useful, isn't it? Because he would be anticipating the disappointment. His his staple present used to be Badadas mm -hmm. bath foam, mm -hmm. and that was a good that was a good present, right? But then he he I don't know what he went off the Badadas thing. I think maybe because it's quite expensive. That's when we started getting paper and batteries. Do you think it would be okay to give someone a film on DVD that you'd got free in a paper? <laughs> no. Do you think it would be okay? This is an idea I had. Yeah. Uh, to make a homemade box set. Do you know you go into HMV and you see, for instance, the action pack? Yeah. And it'll have a Jack Ryan film, a Bourne film. Yes. And maybe an Arnie film. Right. Just three randomly selected action films, one of which is usually good, but the other fewer stinkers. You know, they're rubs. trying to palm you off with a rubs Certainly. one. Could I just get some old DVDs off my shelf that I don't watch anymore or haven't opened? Yeah make a kind of box and call it the crap pack <laughs> with k's all spelt with k's yeah. and personalize it like adam's crap pack you're doing little uh bits of artwork for the box yeah right? I'd, I'd get into photoshop and i would do i'd print out a proper and have a picture of you and crap pack it would have explosions behind it and it would have all sorts of copy on it you know do you love crap then this is the pack for you four <laughs> of the crappiest films ever made <laughs> as selected by adam buxton that's a good present do you think it's cheap? I'd love that. Because the thing is, the outlay of time I can't be bothered to do it. You I can't, can't be bothered. That's the thing. I can't be bothered to do it. What you'd actually do is just create the crap pack by picking three well, DVDs You know what? You know random. what? This is the present. <laughs> just the thought. that It's the thought that counts, right? That was a good present. And though. I'm thinking about it. Thanks very much. So we want to hear your ideas, listeners, for um, things like crap presents that you've got in a similar style, or maybe crap presents that Here's you've Here's another given. one. Yeah. If... Uh, you had a pet. Mm -hmm. What if I gave you that pet, but wrapped up in a box? So then you uh, you open it, and it's it's your pet. It's your own pet. But the present is you're deliver you're rescuing it from suffering from being trapped in the box. What? Is that enough of a gift? No, that's completely insane. It's cheap though. That's, I mean, that's ludicrous. Do you get my logic? No, I don't. It's it's madness. What? So you could do it with children? You could just. You wouldn't do it with a child. <laughs> you could. Put, pop the child in a box. It's the same sort of it's thing. It's a way to remind something of the value of something they've already got. Do you know what I mean? Just wrap it up and present it to them again. <laughs> yeah. No, that's madness. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it, though. <laughs> I'd like to see you do it. I'd like to hear how it goes. Now, listen, we've got a trail for Sports Personality of the Year coming up now, Joe. I mean, that's exciting, isn't it? Who's it going to be? Bobby Charlton? Duncan Goodhue? It could be any of the latest sports stars. Linford Christie? Christy, Mike Tyson, <laughs> Martina Navratilova. Hey, hey, uh. so nearly Queen of the Jungle. Let's hear it. That's archaeologists with winter sleep. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's nearly time for the news, but before that, let me tell you that uh, Text the Nation this week is all about the crappiest presents that you've ever got, or maybe given people, um, maybe even homemade presents, that kind of thing. Do email us Adam and Joe dot six music at BBC dot co dot UK, or you can text us on six four zero four six. We'll read out some of those texts and emails sometime
time in the next half hour, but right now it's time for the news. Oh, mm. that was exciting, wasn't it? Sexy exciting. That was the Kings of Leon. What was that one called? Use somebody. You see, it, it works two ways. He's lonely, he could use somebody, like company. Mm, but he's using them, isn't he? he might be he's using them later them. on, just like David Van Day <laughs> might. Confusing double meanings. Listen, Adam, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's an exciting time to tune in if you've just tuned in, because I'm going to give Adam a present. <gasps> an early Christmas present. Wow. Uh, now, this is something I got free in The Guardian. Is it my son in a box? It's not. That's on Christmas Day itself. Oh. <laughs> but uh, this is something I got in The Guardian. I forget what day it was. Uh, but just because it's given away free in a paper, don't go thinking it's not really worth having. Sure. Because this is an amazing thing. This is what was on the masthead of the Sometimes Guardian. Sometimes the best things in life are Newspaper. Free. Wow, it says, free gift wrap by Tilda Swinton. That's right. Free gift wrap in the Guardian. And that's at the very top, above the title of the newspaper even. And then inside the paper, because that's it's got your motor running, hasn't it? It has, yeah. What could this gift wrap be like? Here, here is the gift wrap. It was folded up inside the paper. Maybe you could describe it to listeners. So it's the si it's an A3 sheet of newsprint, uh, but it's blank except for a crudely drawn heart in red with some little dashes coming yeah, but off. Yeah, who the drew heart. that? Swinton. Tilda Swinton drew it. And how long do you think it took her? Well, I would say on the other side. less than a second. <laughs> less than a second. But it's Tilda Swinton. <laughs> yeah. And it's wrapping paper. So imagine what you could do with that. You, you could, could wrap things. You could wrap things in it and then you'd give it to someone and what would happen? They would say, this wrapping paper is beautiful. No, Who they designed wouldn't say it? that. They'd oh. say, this wrapping paper's rubbish. <laughs> what a load of rubbish. <laughs> Who's drawn this stupid heart? Did no, they'd, throw, they'd discard it. Yeah. They'd discard it. And then you'd say, hey, don't throw that away. Have a closer look at it. You know what I'm going to do with this paper? What? I'm going to iron it. Really? And then I'm going to frame it. <laughs> really? Yeah, in a frame that costs over £50. Pounds. The Guardian, they do a good line in giving free stuff away. They, they had a very successful uh, series of wall charts, sort of traditional wall charts that they gave away. Mm -hmm. They sometimes give away free books. But I'd say this is without doubt the stupidest thing The Guardian have ever given Wait. away free. Oh, look. Is it for charity? It's for charity. Well, that's the last refuge You're of a scoundrel. Evil. You're evil. Charity is the most feeble excuse for any kind of idiotic <laughs> behaviour. Well done giving the money to charity, but how is that going to raise money for charity? Um, giving it, it's not as if they're charging for it. Well, no, that you can bid for the original, uh, and the proceeds go to a charity project. Them and their weaselly charity excuses. But it's written in very small letters on the back, so you would be forgiven for not would seeing you it. Bid, how much would you bid for the original of that? I would bid... Um, Six pounds. Six pence. Pounds. pounds. I'd go as high as pounds. That's good. I mean, she's one of the greatest actresses of our generation. Yeah, but she ain't. She's no artist. I don't know. Look at the way she's drawn the heart, though, with the pen. Yeah, she's like it's curled over in the middle. That's amazing, man. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Now, we're going to read out some of the emails and texts that we've been getting in a little later on. Just to remind you, we're asking you for some of the crappest presents mm. that you've ever given or got, and we've already got some very good messages coming in. Please keep them coming in. Uh, here's a bit of music right now. Are we really going to play Tom Petty? Is this new Petty or vintage Petty? What's wrong with playing Petty? I'm not saying. I'm just curious, that's all. He doesn't seem like a six music kind of a person, but maybe that's very ignorant of me, and I'm very sorry, Petty fans. Here's Here Comes My Girl. Tom Petty, there, uh, and uh, Here Comes My Girl. Do you think Tom Petty um, wears petticoats? Yes, I do. I think he does. And he's very petty. Otherwise, he'd get cold, wouldn't he? Uh, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music, and we're in the midst of Text the Nation. Uh, should we have the jingle there, Ben? Why not? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. So this uh, week's Text the Nation listeners is crap, uh, credit crunch type Christmas presents, super cheap ways of impressing people with a prezi, or the crappest one you've ever got. Uh, we have to think of one feature a week, don't we, for this show? And sometimes we struggle. 
This is a good feature. But this is a good, that was what I was building up to say. Yeah. No but one else would have done this. We haven't struggled. No one would have done this. This is good. This is Radio Gold. It's the first time anyone's ever done this. Baker and Ball wouldn't think they of They would this. never think they of this. They would never think of crap presents. They don't think of things anyway. They have it all written for them. It's all written for yeah. them by elves. Not like us. Uh, here's a text from Samantha. She says, last year, my dad got me a bag of pegs, like the ones you <laughs> used to hang clothes on the That's washing line. That's good. <laughs> I was 16. I don't have a washing line. He's dropping hints, isn't he? <laughs> does right. she not wash enough or does she not do enough of the housework? Maybe. But Christmas isn't a time to drop a hint like that. Pegs. <laughs> it's a typ typical dad thing. Simon Peg in a box. That would be different. That would be sexy. Uh, but dads do do that. I mean, they're the main culprits in this whole dads thing. Dads do do. Dads do do that. Dads do do. Especially if they're architect. Uh, listen, here's another one from an anonymous texter. Hi, Adam and Joe. I wasn't going to send this in, but I sense any contribution would be welcomed. <laughs> Correct. Me and my stepfather once got matching bum bags off my auntie. I'll read that again. Matching bum bags. <laughs> no problems there. But my sister noticed that that specific bum bag had been given away free in a certain ladies' magazine <laughs> the week before. Uh, free gift bum bag. But not two of them, though. She would have gone out and bought a second copy of the mag. Bum bag. That's quite good, though, isn't it? That is quite... Is that... You'd be excited by a bum bag. I'm impressed that she went and bought a second copy of Spritzer or whatever magazine. Fanny pack. Was. Funny That's pack. what the Americans call them. <laughs> Whichever way you slice it, it's not a well-named garment. You're not allowed to call it that on the Big British Castle, though. No. It would cause all kinds of problems. Um, that's a nice idea, though, because you get purses and things on those mags as you well. You can get some good stuff. You know, uh, Radio <laughs> Times is giving away a flat-screen TV next week, just packaged with the mag. On the mag. Slip between the pages, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really good. One of those Thanks. LCD yep. tellies. Yeah. Is that really true? No. Okay, just checking. Uh, here we go. Here's another uh, dad one. This is for... Oh, the, well, we, actually, the, the end of this text is missing. <laughs> <laughs> it says... <laughs> it's Greystoke. Razor. <laughs> Lord Greystoke. Mirror. Come down the stairs on your feet, not using that tray. Oh, oh, oh. oh the tray! Oh, like lady. Oh, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful Andy Markdown. <laughs> not real voice. Uh... Adam is not the only one who gets paper and batteries for Christmas. Every year, without fail, my dad gets me a pack of printer paper that I know for a fact came from his office. I get that as well. <laughs> I get printer paper, and uh, my dad has taken to giving me, uh, you know, glossy printer paper, which is Ooh. sort of, that's the expensive end of the paper market. Yeah, but we're still now. talking only about ten sheets really? of A4 size. Not even a ream. Uh, not even no, a D-ream. No, 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 it's not even a D-ream. Uh, sorry, not A4, but postcard size, like a, a whatever right. it is. And uh, so he gives me that and he goes, mm, it's glossy. Like I'm supposed to be really knocked out. Wow. I mean, it is useful. He goes, it's useful, though. It's bound to be he useful. Sounds like the uh, the the um, Panda Pops polar bear. Mm. Who was the polar bear that said it's Frothy Man? Oh, yeah. It's Frothy Man. Wasn't that a Cresta Bear? The Cresta Bear. There you go. It's know. glossy, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> but it's glossy, Adam. Here's one from Marvin. Hey, it's my turn. Oh, you have one then. All right, then. I haven't got one. Oh, yeah. No, I do have one. I do have one. Uh, here's one from Sh How do you, uh, Sh Siobhan. My boyfriend once got a toilet roll holder that was made out of an old stick and a bit of wire. He hadn't even made it, but he bought it off an old hippie. <laughs> what? He also bought himself a clock made out of an old Stella can. Now, that's quite good. That's you, good. You can turn anything into a clock. Yes. All you need to do is take an existing clock, <laughs> smash it up, and just have the hands and the mechanism. Then punch a hole in literally anything. Yeah. A friend's face. And <laughs> don't do that. But it would be funny if you... It have wouldn't the, be funny Have if the hand it. sticking out of yeah, their nose there. Just make sure you put the mechanism on the inside of whatever it is and the hands on the outside <laughs> and draw a 12 and a 6. You don't even have to do that. You can just do dots. Yeah. And bang. It would be clock. good you, if you got a celebrity clock. You could ask Britney Spears to pop the mechanism in her mouth and yeah. then the... Uh, <laughs> the and hands, then she wouldn't sing as well. She hands, wouldn't be able to sing. Exactly. Just, it's two birds with one yeah. stone. And then you have the hands popping out of her mouth. The problem is when it got to midday it would stop at her nose so you'd have to remove spears's nose yeah and you'd have to wind it up by putting your hand up her bottom <laughs> <laughs> we'll be reading out more of your texts and emails on the subject of crap presents very shortly right now here's a free play for you listeners this is a mellow one you know I, it's nice when you get a bit of a mellow tune right yes and this is an instrumental 
track uh which i found on a compilation called fuzzy felt folk and this is really enjoyable it's uh, by claude vassori and it's called folk guitar you would think that would have been used as a theme tune for a lovely program in the 70s wouldn't you but i don't think it was a little stop motion kiddie thing yeah oliver postgate type thing about some uh, furry animals living by a river exactly having knife fights that yeah. kind of thing uh that was claude vasori with a track called folk guitar this is adam and joe here on bbc six music we're in the midst of text the nation right now should we read out a couple more before we um play this exciting hub combo mash session <laughs> okay <laughs> here's one right now from marvin he says hi adam and joe the worst christmas gift i ever got was a video rewinder um that my mum said was useful and would make my video last longer uh i gave it to her back and told her to get herself a refund who in the world needs a video rewinder parents if, if there are any parents listening out there today you need to get it into your thick skulls that christmas is not about practicality right it's just about indulgence and stupidity and and value isn't it yeah disposable money when you're a kid you're just dreaming that you'll get given something amazingly expensive and brilliantly indulgent like a huge surround sound system blu-ray player and you know when do you think that urge to receive that never. kind of thing goes away never 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 never, 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 never. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes yeah, size is the thing isn't it when you're that age though particularly if you're if you're a child and you're listening to this uh program with your parents mm. in the same room and i know some families do listen mm -hmm. then sick families then there is no excuse for not giving your kids something escapist it's tough isn't it because as a parent you want to invest in something that that, that will maybe last well, you more don't than want your kids months. to be too materially minded either no you don't just want to go and spend because the thing is that actually it's not very expensive to buy something giant you can go and spend 15 quid on a really giant piece of old crap right and they will probably love it for that oh, moment. so you think it's just size physical size yeah yeah they love the size the of size things. of the have you ever been tempted to wrap something small in a giant box that's something people sometimes do isn't right it? yes exactly that happens to a lot. see the look of disappointment here's an email right now from selena in el paso texas yes and she says a few christmases ago my cousin played a present prank on his brother he presented his brother with a quite large box of course his brother was elated as usually the bigger the box the more exciting the gift right he what? opened the box to find a slightly smaller box which he opened to find a bit of um which he opened to find a bit of that packaging popcorn right so she's talking about the pop stuff mm -hmm. i've never heard it called that before once he got out the box oh well, i didn't read this <laughs> too properly once he got out the box inside all the popcorn there was oh no <laughs> welcome to my world it's all gone wrong this is what you deal with on this is what i have to deal with on a weekly basis not all correspondents construct a sentence properly they don't do it they, and they don't use the proper punctuation that's the do thing you want a bit more time suddenly you'll get a random full stop here's a good one from uh, chris in twickenham he says hi guys as a child i was given the game pop-up pirate that's a good game oh, they're in a barrel uh, yeah, yeah 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 and you have to stick swords in this no you have to remove no you stick swords in the side until the pirate pops up you never know which is the right, store that's right, going to make right. him pop, pop up. up pirate it was lacking this game of uh, pop up pirate that his dad gave him was lacking the pirate <laughs> my dad replaced it with a cork <laughs> <laughs> that's classic dad activity isn't it yeah i mean what difference should it make if it's just a cork with a pirate's face still the same it? game it's exciting again no excuse for parents to do something like that that's outrageous that's typical how are you getting on with your mail there have you abandoned it well not really that well i might have to have another um track i feel quite humiliated after launching in also i felt that i, I was segueing very well when i launched you into did a, it. it was going so well you did a brilliant segue you switched from a personal anecdote to a because i knew of correspondence I'd that read tied the, into it i'd read the first couple of lines and i thought hang on this is relevant and so my brain started clicking and i yeah. thought this is going to be then you smooth. were overconfident which made you look even stupider when right. the whole thing crumbled right. it completely crumbled <laughs> and got away from me it was so it was one of the worst moments of my life what an idiot what an absolute 
absolute idiot. I hate myself. Now it's hub combo time, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. What is? It? Explain the hub combo. The hub combo is basically two musicians at once in the hub, but they've decided to uh, take their inspiration from McDonald's here at Six Music and describe it as a combo, which is possibly the trashiest possible word <laughs> they could use to describe it. But let's put that aside for the minute and imagine that it's brills which of course it is <laughs> so that's not difficult uh, oh dear i'm just being rude about the name of the feature i think is a feature it's a brilliant just brilliant say idea. who's playing it was recorded at last night at maida vale last night uh and paul weller and adele were part of the combo and uh here it is this is invisible by paul weller so estelle isn't even involved in fact so forget everything i just said <laughs> here's paul weller with invisible there you go that's uh paul weller that's paul weller there in the hub combo zone <clears throat> i'm sorry i was rude about the i wouldn't say rude flippant i was flippant about the notion of uh the hub combos and that's not the sort of thing a good dj should do you should support the endeavours of your station and not be sarcastic right. and cynical gratuitously just to make yourself feel big. Which right. is what I was doing. <sighs> um, the logic of a bully. And I'm sorry, Hub Combo is a terrific name for them. For a terrific thing. For a terrific thing. Uh, Weller and Adele there, and you can watch the full... Oh, sorry. Oh, those noises you're making. They're spooky noises for my next segment. Oh, it's Ooh, exciting. Spooky. Uh, For my next segment. I know that's... that's <laughs> I didn't know you had segments. Neither did I. I don't have segments. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> I made up the whole concept on the spot. Wow. Because, um... This show's just gone up a notch. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes, uh, So, yeah, you, I was going to say you can watch the full Paul Weller and Adele hub combo on... It runs out on the computer screen there. Oh, here it is. Sorry. It's written down on the piece yeah. of paper, isn't it? On your TV, you press the red button on any BBC TV channel, no. and you can watch him playing that. That's amazing. Are we going to play anything that they did together, Paul Weller and Adele? Because it just seems sort of pointless to introduce this combo thing and then just play a solo performance later on. Being a bit sniffy again there. I am, aren't I? No, it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> to call something a combo and then just have one person it's a good idea well done <laughs> joe have right you heard that <laughs> <laughs> have you heard the uh s the song by pink which is called bad influence uh probably you're aware of pink right i know pink she's a very tall sexy sort of uh uh lady she's not tall is she i think she seems tall maybe she's just uh filmed with shorter people around her she's one of these people that is filmed like oh i'm thinking of gwen stefani i yeah. get confused yeah no, pink's no, no. tiny pink is more of a um little runty person yeah and she like in her videos they speed up the action so i know who she's, pink is yeah yeah she spells her name instead of an i she uses an exclamation mark <laughs> And that sums up a great deal about what Pink's life right. is like. Yeah. You know? She's it's, provocative and she's punky. She's very provocative. She's sassy. Yeah. But she likes to have a good time she's as like well. She's like Tank Girl. She's a bit like Tank Girl she's come to life, isn't she? She's a bit like Tank Girl yeah. come to life. Mm. She's had a difficult year. I think maybe she got divorced. And she says that her new album uh, uh, is very vulnerable. It's got a lot of vulnerable mm. songs on it. Uh, in fact, she claims that it's her most vulnerable album. Wow. Uh, it's her fifth album. And uh, the album is called Funhouse. And this track, Bad Influence, is on there. I heard it on Radio 1 the other day. I was listening to Radio 1. Well, you got to keep down with the kids, haven't you? Yeah, you know, and they, I was listening to it for a while, and they were talking and stuff, and I listened to all of it for about 10 wow. minutes before I went insane. You're to great. Turn it off. But um, it, I heard this track on there. I'll play you a little snatch of this track right now. Mm. Sure, I'll have another one. It's early. Three olives, shake it up, I like it dirty Tequila for my friend that makes it flirty Trust me, I'm the instigator of underwear Showing up here and there, uh-oh I'm always on a mission from the get-go So what if it's only one o'clock in the afternoon? It's never too soon to stand out of So she's she's having a crazy party time there. But were you listening to the lyrics that yes, she was, I was singing? Yes, yeah. And the thing is that if you actually listen to what she's singing and then read back the lyrics, which you can do, obviously, by going online, mm. it's a very different kind of vibe you get there. I mean, that song is unrestrainedly nutty and fun, isn't it? 
Um, and maybe she's deliberately being ironic by uh, creating an up-tempo, you know, atmosphere for what seems to be like a scream from the abyss, as far as I can tell. Here's the lyrics, right? If you read them out with my scary atmosphere track, which I, uh, which I was just creating there. Mm. Here we go. You hear that scary atmosphere? Yes, I can hear it. It's a little bit of a scare. I'm just going to turn up the scary atmosphere. Okay. So here are the lyrics for Bad Influence. All right, sir. I'll have another one. It's early. Three olives. Shake it up. I like it dirty. Dirty. Tequila for my friend. It makes her flirty. Flirty. Trust me. I'm the instigator of underwear. Showing up here and there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what if it's only one o'clock in the afternoon? It's never too soon to send out all the invitations to the last night of your life. Lordy, lordy, lordy. I can't help it. I like to party. It's genetic. It's electrifying. Wind me up and watch me go. When she stops, nobody knows. And on it goes like that, you see. It's like a, uh, some kind of Edgar Allan Poe. It's like Edgar Allan Poe, or just the confessions of a wino or someone with a terrible alcohol problem. She's the instigator of underwear. Yeah. Is that because she started a fashion of wearing your underwear over your clothes? Wow, like a superhero. I yeah, don't know. I think so. I think she started, like, wearing your bra on top of your shirt. Mm. Or your panties outside your trousers. Right. Well, yeah, well, that could be it. I mean, she loves the idea that she's a bad influence. Later on, she talks about... Go, calm down, I know your son said he was in my house. He's the captain of the football team, but I turned him out. He wasn't the first. He won't be the last to tone it down. This happens all the time. I mean, it's her life's completely unravelling there. But she's having a little party moment. I mean, that's that's shocking, don't you think? It's it's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little bit. it's really brought me down. I Do you think Pink's having problems? I think she's she must be having massive problems, sure. She needs help. Yeah. Is there any way that we can organise some kind of charity? Do you think she's sort of partying and everyone's dancing, but really she's crying? You know, she's going to be found slumped in the corner of the club. Almost certainly. In tears and nearly dead. And then people will look back at the lyrics to that album in a very different way. We should have listened. Yeah. To Adam Buxton reading them out. We should have listened to Adam <laughs> Buxton. <laughs> a bit like a pond. We should have believed Buxton. <laughs> it's just a little warning for you there, Pink fans. Now, it's important. we are going to play some more music now, and after that, I think we'll have some more texts. We'll have some more texts with uh, Texanation, your crappest uh, Christmas presents. This is a Q tip classic. It's not from his new album. No, no. it's from the one before. This is Breathe and Stop. Very good. Well done. That's Q tip with Breathe and Stop. Let's return now to Text the Nation, and we are asking you to tell us about some of the crappest presents that you've ever received, or maybe that you've ever given. Uh, homemade presents, that kind of thing. And I had a thought. Yeah, go on then. Uh, that the key thing for all present giving is a shrink wrap machine. Ah. If you have a shrink wrap machine, uh, then you can make any old thing look new. That's right. You can also take anything you're given back to the shop and get your money back. Mm -hmm. Probably without the receipt, because it's shrink wrapped. Right. Right? Uh, isn't that true? That that must be true. I mean, that's a very good idea. How much do they cost? Probably not that much. You know, it doesn't it's cost that much to get a laminating machine, does it? No. But a shrink wrap machine, that would be different. That's bigger hardware. We should look into it. Still worth it, I reckon. Because that would be great. If anyone out there knows about shrink wrap machines, do let us know. Here's a text from Vivian in Glasgow. She says, Hi, Adam and Joe. Last Christmas, my aunt sent me her old underwear. <laughs> what? I don't know whether I can read the rest of this. Have you read this one, Ben? It's a text. Yeah. <laughs> it's not I don't think I can read that one. It wasn't filthy underwear, though, was it? Yeah. What? Yeah. What, you mean like saucy, not actually soiled? Mm, she's incontinent. She wears ten a lady pants. What? Let's skip over that. Let's skip over that one. <laughs> Brilliantly skipped Is over. that true? <laughs> <laughs> That's extraordinary. Would someone's gran actually send them their own pants? You hand down clothes, though, don't you? Yeah, you do. Pass me down. Well, I could understand it. I mean, it would be... Ladies might pa do pass me down knickers. Certainly. I mean, it would raise an eyebrow. But it if you're... A, it's like when a, when a man gives his son a, a family heirloom, like a watch, a classic watch. Mm. A mother does the same with her pants. 
It's uh, it's less common, I would say, but it, it, family it surely must have happened, especially if your mum had some beautiful frilly uh, knickers from the 40s or whatever. I think that I would be know. a beautiful family tradition. Yeah, but not soiled. Wait, just clean them up. That would be a bad family tradition. Here's an email right now from Abby Cornwall in Edinburgh, and she says, My granny once made a Christmas card for me out of the cardboard base that frozen pizzas come on. She folded it up and wrote Merry Christmas, Love Gran with black <laughs> marker on the bumpy bit so that it was all really wonky and it looked like a head case had made it while sitting on the bus. She cut the corners off the envelope that she'd received with Christmas... Uh, off the envelopes that she'd received with Christmas cards and uh she cut them into tiny triangles and stuck them all round the merry christmas bit and then folded it into a semicircle shape the worst of it was that she hadn't even wiped the cardboardy bit so that when i opened it i ended up with greasy fingers also she once brought me a white plate with a small fluffy cat uh, a small fluffy cat head with skewiff eyes really squinty looking one green and one blue under a glass dome in the center of it she's mad my grand but ace Love the show. Thanks, Abby. I read that out very badly. You read the whole thing out. I'm, that's good. That's good. I'm just learning because you usually read this. But I try ben, and edit, yeah. Ben, our uh, producer, has foolishly given me a couple to read out. You see, Joe's, doesn't, Ben doesn't know what he's doing. Joe's the king of this, <laughs> and I'm just learning. That's not true at all, as you could see from my pant. All right, text. reading king. Read one out. Uh, here's one from Adam. In, here's one from Adam in Norwich. My <laughs> older brother, many years ago, when he was about 15, I really, really wanted a saxophone. My parents couldn't afford this so they made one from loo roll buttons and plastic beakers. While the carefully created device was wonderfully made, when he unwrapped it, it broke his little heart. Oh. I think uh, when you're a child, that's the angriest you can ever get at Christmas, or the most confused and upset, because you love your parents, yet they seem to have punched you in the face. Yeah. It's supposed to be the happiest day of the year, yet you feel furious. I'm feeling angry even now. My, um sister-in-law she came around last year mm. and she gave my boys the gift of books and they are well they at that time they were three and five so unable to read all that confidently and the gift of a book at that age is like being handed a steaming pile of dog pops <laughs> <laughs> and they immediately unwrapped it eagerly right they're all already a little suspicious when they saw the package because they thought hmm a large in, you know a large plastic truck doesn't usually come in this kind of packaging so they rip all the paper off there's a book what was the book it was like it was a good book you know clive like, james's tv essays yeah it was like russell brand's my bookie work or something oh. no it wasn't but it was a nice book that she got them and one that i i'm sure we've subsequently read and enjoyed together but they instantly burst into tears as soon as they saw it was a book they were just like Aah! and they threw it on the floor and they weren't having it listen we're going to come back to this text the nation and when we come back it's going to be so polished should be really right, slick we're going to have we're going to segue a couple of tracks and we're going to you know what the thing is i even read that one out to myself before and i still ruined it well you're gonna have a last chance okay to try and save your reputation our final text the nation link is going to be amazing it's gonna be really slick be coming up a bit later in the show so keep them coming in the text number is six four zero four six or email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk now is this uh joe's free play here uh, oh it's just uh it's glass vegas now is it and or a trail first it's exciting isn't it like describing to people how confused we are <laughs> here's some sounds you know that was a free play listeners that was uh, a band from the 80s called abc with poison arrow do you think it's necessary to explain who abc are it probably is isn't it in this you never day know age? yeah you never that really... album though is a classic isn't it uh lexicon of love yes yes absolutely doesn't it appear on like q magazine's top album lists it's Should... properly respected isn't it now yeah yeah it's a stone classic you know i've got a signed copy have you really do you think that's worth anything I, I bought it when it first came out i didn't meet the band or anything but they just had a few signed copies on the shelf for hmv back right. in 82 or whenever that was mm -hmm. like they sometimes have signed books in bookshops yes i knew uh but uh, so do you think that's worth anything no 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 it's disappointing isn't it sometimes you buy stuff that you think is going to yeah. be valuable in future especially as a kid and then when you get to our age a long time has passed mm -hmm. so things like that should increase in value but then you go on ebay and you find the depressing truth is you're still only going to get a yeah. fiver for it in fact they're probably cost what worth less than the initial outlay yeah i know that is disappointing isn't it uh because the thing is that it's all got to be pristine and all that kind of that stuff that kind of value inc uh, uh, builds up incrementally over over hundreds of years 
rights. Although right? I would imagine that if he, if your name wasn't on it, then it's probably worth more. It might, his, uh, right, my name isn't on it. Yeah. It just has their signatures. Well, it might be priceless. Wow. It, you should take it along to Antiques Roadshow. I'm going to eBay. <laughs> Get in touch with Fiona Bruce. Uh, it's time for the news now, ladies and gentlemen. It's just gone 11.30 and here it is. Why would they even go for the last little four seconds there, do you think? Song's not quite there yet. We'll just need a little extra... Endings are very important. Dingleberry on the end the last of the song thing there. that stay in the uh, listener's head. Yeah. That was the Kaiser Chiefs, sounding very much like XTC, I thought. With Good Days, Bad Days, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. And uh, I think we're going to maybe wrap up Text the Nation now. Um, we are asking about crap presents that you have got or given in the past. Maybe we won't wrap it up. Maybe we'll have another one after this. But uh, here's a couple that I've received. I'm going to have another go at reading. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, Dear Adam and Joe, the worst gift I have ever seen given was a gift my stepbrother got from his mum. She had told him she was going to get him a guitar for Christmas. And lo and behold, she says, <laughs> Claire says lo and behold, uh, instead of lo and behold, she spells it L-O-N-E, behold, which is an egg corn, I think, isn't it? Right, what does that mean? Well, it's, um, as far as I know, it's like a sort of, uh, phrase or a word that you've misheard, so... You've turned, and that you've turned into a different phrase yeah. or word. Yeah, so the, the term egg corn comes from the fact that some people think acorns maybe were oh. egg corns. Uh, so she's gone for lo and behold instead of lo and behold. Other ones include minefield instead of minefield. Yes, I, I used to think it was communal, communal garden. Like communal garden. Instead of communal garden, I used right. to think it was a communal garden. There you go, little egg corn there. Nothing Thanks, wrong with that. Claire from Liverpool. Oh, sorry, I torpedoed your story there, Claire. It was going so well as well. I was reading it really well. Lo and behold, on the day that she, uh, she had a guitar-sized box wrapped up under a tree. However, he opened it to find that all it contained was the guitar case for the guitar that he wanted and a small note which read, This is for when you manage to save up and buy your own guitar. Love you, Mum. It was cruel, but very funny, and he still hasn't managed to save up for the guitar to put in the case. That's from Claire in Liverpool. Thanks, Claire. There's a lot of cruel parents out there. Not cruel, but parents who choose Christmas as the as the day to teach their kids something. Ah, yes. It's the wrong day to choose. <laughs> that is. Birthdays. Hugh, in, Hugh in Kent says, past present highlights from my dad as a child have included a shoe in a sole, a garden centre mug, shoe polish, <laughs> a yellow plastic poncho, and get this, a Christmas card sealed in its original plastic wrapping. <laughs> With that is inside. good present buying from Dad. <laughs> a Christmas card that you can give to someone else next year. Kate and Keeley says, My mum once told all my family that I needed a purse. So for Christmas, I got eight purses. This is made worse by the fact that it's my birthday on Christmas Day. <laughs> I, that happened to me once. I made it known that I wanted a bag out of desperation, you know, because mm. my family very nicely always says, what do you want for Christmas? It's so hard to buy you uh, presents. So I, I racked my brains. And one year I just said, I don't know, like a bag, man bag type thing. I got bags from everybody, like ludicrous bags. Bags galore. Maybe there should be a preview day. Yeah. A presents preview day. Right. It would happen a week before Christmas to give the weekend before Christmas to give you time to replace the present. Yeah. You would preview the presents. That's good. And be able to say no, no, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> My dad just writes very specific lists now of what Does he wants. He? Yeah. He's a good man. Here's another one from Corin from Birmingham. When I was seven, my brother and sister got new bikes for Christmas. Seeing them from afar when we came down that morning, I was sure there would be one for me. No. <laughs> Only my old bike, which my mum and dad told me the fairies had cleaned and sprinkled with magic dust. That is It was rough. as dirty as it always had been. Oh. Poor Corin. That's hardcore. Here's one from Dave, who was uh, thinking about your idea for repackaging things and put, yep. putting them in boxes, specifically living things and pets. He says, Joe's pet in a box idea is actually a hit in a park in Laos. You pay to give some chirpy sparrow. Uh, to, you pay to give some chirpy sparrows in a cage. Uh, freedom. The, the gift of freedom. Yeah. yeah. They're caught again later. <laughs> Quids in. It's a good idea. It's a money money raising scheme. Here's one from uh, Mega. What? No. Uh, well, let me not bother with the name. I'll read out the text. Dear, dear Adam, and dear, dear Joe. For the last few years, I've received coloring pencils with my name on them. It's very tiresome. And you can't really give them to char charity shops for a fairly obvious reasoning. Also, last year they even spelt the name wrong, so it came up as Drain Hill instead of Adrian Hill. 
<laughs> Drain Hill's a good name for a band. You, you used to give a good gift, which was uh, inscribed pencils, but mm-hmm. you'd make them inscribe something stupid. What did you have on them? You well, Totties I had one. And it was yeah, it, yeah, was yeah. it uh, me who gave the Totties one, or did I receive them from Zach? I can't remember. I don't remember, but that's a good gift, to get personalised stuff, but get them just to write something I- idiotic on them. Yeah. It, yeah, that's always fun. Here's one uh, from Will and Beck. He says, or they say... One year, me and my wife both agreed not to buy each other a present. It was possibly the most miserable Christmas morning ever. And that's the thing, that actually me and my wife have said that this year as well, Credit Crunch Christmas. We said, listen, no presents. But that's useless. But then if you break the present embargo and the other person doesn't... You're in trouble. It's real trubs. Have you got one more there before we wrap up Text the Nation? No! Okay, well, that's it. Thank you very much indeed. We had so many, and it's too many to read out, and the ones that I tried to read out, I couldn't even read them anyway. We don't have a sexy assistant. We usually have a sexy assistant in the studio to help go through the texts and emails, but for some reason, uh, we haven't got one this week. We don't know what's happening in the She's on sexy break. Maybe it's because I was rude about the combos. <laughs> They've withdrawn They're our... They're taking stealthy revenge. Withdrawn our funding. So thank you very much for all your texts and emails. Apologies if I uh, ruined the reading of your message there. But we'll have more text and nation next week. We're going to remind you of Song Wars after this next track, which is another blast of wonderfulness from the Hub Combo recorded at Made That's Avail. like it. Uh, <laughs> recorded at Made Avail last night. This is Paul Weller and Adele doing Chasing Pavements. I, mm. Mm. I even said it was Estelle earlier. Right. I made a complete mishmash of that. Well, that's I? business as usual for us, though, isn't it? Here we go. Yes. Nice one, Adele. Good job, Paul. Good job, Paul. Good job, Paul. Oh, that was wicked. Good job, Paul. That was uh, Paul Weller and Adele recorded live at the uh, Hub Combo session at Maida Vale last night. And you can see them performing that by going to any BBC TV channel and pressing the red button if your technology is... Little burp there has a red button. (laughs) It's nice to punctuate a sentence with a little burp. People love a bit of a burp because it it just makes us human. We're not these untouchable, brilliant, polished radio machines that people think we are no we're human we're capable of making mistakes are we human <laughs> or are we dancer mm. you see that's the question isn't it yeah. now we're going to remind you of our song wars songs this week let's have the jingle jungle it's time for song wars the war of the songs a couple of tunes by a couple of prongs so check it out now i can already see this is going adam's way no is it by a lot of the uh yeah because yours is uh yours is funnier you know and people seem to have this thing about funny things they like them you know <laughs> more than things that aren't funny i don't know what it is it annoys me Listen to the bad grace coming out of Cornish there. But, you know, what I'm saying is just because mine isn't necessarily, like, funny... Yours is tunefully brilliant. Wow, I mean, I've hijacked, a Gary, I've hijacked a Gary Newman tune for mine, so... But don't, but make sure you listen to these songs carefully, is all I'm saying. Don't make, don't make Malcolm Gladwell sty- Gladwell-style Gladwell. snap decisions. Well, we're going to play yours first now, anyway, so yeah. have a listen to this. This is my tribute to Joanna Lumley's uh, documentary where she went to see the Northern Lights... And this is a uh, Kings of Convenience style kind of mellow folk number. This is called La 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 Lumley. For 55 years of my life, I've dreamt about seeing the Northern Lights. She was born in Kashmir in 1946. Her father was a major in the Gurkha Rifles. When she was a little girl, she had a picture book. With a drawing of the northern light, she wished she'd one day see that sight. She applied for RADA, but she did not get in. They said she'd never be a model to ugly and a thin. But she ignored the scorn they poured, confounded her detractors. Five years later, she was Britain's most in demand model and actress. La 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 la, la 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 la. This is the journey I've always dreamt of making. As Purdy in the new Avengers, she'd kill you with her heel. An alien with psychic powers in sapphire and steel. But in her mind, she could still find her unspoken ambition. To see the northern lights before she died was still her mission. La 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 la, la 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 la. This is a lifelong ambition. La 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 la. La 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 for the lonely My only dread is that we won't get to see them Through absolute 
absolutely fabulous two marriages a son And even though it feels as though her life has just begun She journeys over arctic drifts and through the cold and wild And sees the light she's dreamed of seeing since she was a child I'm worried that that won't mean anything to people who didn't see the documentary uh mm, there's no solution to it really i'm just gonna stay worried <laughs> that's one of your musically strongest efforts if i may say right. so a that's friend, nice of you to say a friend of ours was staying with us the other weekend and uh we were having a couple of tinnies and for some reason i was forcing some song wars songs on him and although he got a chuckle out of a couple of mine he said with genuine awe and respect wow joe's a really good musician isn't he like about a couple who of was yours. it was it paul mccartney it was paul mccartney wow from the beatles and he was round there wow and i said come on macca listen to mine i mean come on that's who, funny who was it really funny stuff it was dan oh really he's good on the guitar he's a musical genius he knows his sausages absolutely so here is just to remind you folks these are songs that we've challenged each other to write about national treasures people who are wonderful you know national people. treasures and they are people joe's gone for lumley I went for Stephen Fry. Here's my song about Fry. This is a song about Stephen Fry, including well known facts about his life in the style of early Gary Newman. If you were making a documentary about Stephen Fry, you could use this song in it to illustrate different bits. He was a tear away when he was young He was expelled from school and even went to jail He stole a credit card from a family friend But he cleaned up his act and got a scholarship To go to Cambridge University Where he met Hugh Laurie from House He's got a fruity way of talking He uses lots of long words He's nice Just coming. He did a lot of sketches with you, Laurie from House. Both of them were clever and unfashionably posh. Made them perfect for playing Jeeves and Worcester. It was clear that they were all so good at acting, which of course they both got on to do. He was marvellous as his hero, Oscar Wilde. Stephen struggles publicly with his mental health. He goes from highs to unbearable lows. He's on the program of acting that was good. For fellow sufferers it was comforting to see. They probably won't use this bit in the documentary. He's highly intelligent and sensitive. And if I was gay... some credit also his recent series on america was very good he's a national treasure and a national treasure too with nick cage it would be wrong to suggest he was perfect some films that he's been in have been a little bit rough like peter scrinton too and spice world yeah, that's the worst you can say about the man and if you disagree then there's gonna be trouts that's my Stephen Fry song. So Fantastic. we're asking you to vote for either Stephen Fry or Joanna Lumley in our Song Wars this week. And also, over and above that, we're hoping that we might even get some Fry and Lumley action, right? Some kind of response from Fry or Lumley. Or their people. Lumley lives in the same neck of the woods as She's a South you Londoner. used to, and I always have. That's yeah. right, yeah. She's a Stockwellian, I think. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe I could post that CD through her letterbox. That would certainly make her day. She would be frightened. <laughs> she would be frightened. She would be frightened. The email address is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Vote for your favourite, either Lumley or Fry, uh, Joe or Adam. Uh, yeah, vote for it via email, please. Uh, now, here's a track before we say goodbye to you. Uh, this is the Beastie Boys with Fight for Your Right to Party. The Beastie Boys with Fight for Your Right to Party. Uh, you have been listening to Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Thanks for listening. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Thank you for all your texts and emails. And don't forget the podcast of the highlights of this show, if they find any, will be available on Monday evening. And you can listen to the whole programme again, all three hours, on iPlayer or just by clicking Listen Again on the uh, Six Music website. But now here in the studio with us live is Liz Kershaw. Hello, Liz. Hello, are you filling? Yeah, we're doing, no, well, we're doing no, our hands. Oh, right, okay. This you is our best DJ handover. Yeah. Oh, I'm really pleased to be included like last week. But have you got any delicious buffet treats haven't got no one brought no us prawn any spoons. treats no oh, prawn i came in early because i thought there'd be some grub no. i thought they might pull the prawn spoons from the <laughs> interstitials but i was saddened to see last night that they were still pushing them Absolutely. in the ad in the tv ad yeah. Yeah. but kerry katona's disappeared no has she She's not in the no, TV. No, she's still there. Yeah. Oh, she right, might be okay. feeling a bit sick because she's had a lot of mini Kievs. <laughs> right, I didn't see her. Your voice, Liz Kershaw, it's so good, isn't it? Listen to that. It, it, it's, it's so commanding, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, you've got a you like that DJ voice? voice. Do you think so? She's a proper DJ, Joe. I've, I've had twenty-five you know. years yeah. to. I used to talk like this. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's how we should impressive. talk. But like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> You know, with experience, really? it's been lowered. It's commanding. Yes. I bet you don't say Armin R a lot, do you, on your show? Uh, Where are the kings uh, of Armin Not, not that usually. Was, that wasn't a good yeah. Start. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, are you off? What are you doing today? Anything exciting? Uh, I'm going back home on the train if they're running. Uh, that should take me no more than about seven hours. Uh, what are you doing, Joe? Uh, I'm planning to watch Christine and Near Dark. Um, I'm glazing over now. See ya. Six music.